there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. On this episode of Cash and Kari, rare recordings are discovered. Amber Oil Records, some of these can be worth a lot of money. This quaint country cottage could prove to be a vintage treasure trove. Oh, that's cool. Then, an unexpected visitor threatens to destroy the sale. This is gonna kill us. I'm Kari Cuxi, and I run estate sales. Whether it's a simple bungalow or a grand mansion, there's always a hidden treasure. I also buy out entire homes, refurbish just about anything, and run my vintage store here in Michigan. I'm a treasure broker. I give dusty relics a new lease on life and make great deals in the process. Sold! Kari is headed to see a new customer about an estate sale. Lance has been clearing out his father's estate for some time and could use help. If he's got enough quality items, she'll help him run his sale and liquidate everything so he can sell the house. This house is pretty much unchanged since 1953 when my folks and my brother and I moved in. Okay. Nice library table. That's a nice yeah, piece. It's really got some beautiful wood grain. Yeah, and the feet are gorgeous too. In here, this is kind of an Art Deco dresser. Yes. Um, my dad has some little cameras. Okay. Some old brownies. Very cool. Um, they work great. Awesome. Lots of collectors of uh, cameras and photography equipment yeah. out there. There's three or four in here, plus there's some gear here that doesn't, I don't think it goes with these cameras, but okay. uh, here's a massage and it vibrates like crazy. And it you, looks a little scary. It, it is. <laughs> I'm really happy with Kari. She put me at ease and made me feel like she was just a friend of mine and we were walking through the house and I was showing her around. There's a little bit of everything in here. Yeah. I'm going to take you downstairs. This is the treasure room. It looks like we have our work cut out for us here, Lance. <laughs> There's some unique stuff here. It remains to be discovered. That's fun. We like to discover hidden treasure. I was beginning to wonder, how are we going to resolve this? Every time I would come over, I'd find something and I'd stop and I'd read about it or look at it. And it was just taking me forever to get anything done. That's why you're hiring us. So we'll help you get it all together and organized. Over here is a television. This is the first television we had. This is a 17-inch Motorola. The tube is in there, everything's there. Great. There's a lot of great stuff at Lance's father's house. We've got our work cut out for us as far as getting it prepped and ready, but he had some specific hobbies, so I know this sale is gonna draw some camera and stereo buffs. I have a beautiful example of an Edison phonograph that plays the old cylindrical records. Oh yeah. There's the recording right there. Right in the needlewood hit it. Very cool. Now that Kari has gone through the house with Lance, it's time for her crew to organize and display everything on tables for customers to see. More importantly, she'll need to highlight those key electronic items, research them, and make sure they are priced properly. I mean, we're just gonna let people dig. Okay. Oh well, yes, it's oh, a yeah. digger. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a whole box of these old phones over here. Nice. Old TV over here. Do you have any idea how old it is? I'd say like 50s. Well, if it has all the tubes in it, it's worth probably between $80 and $100. I just looked up one recently, very similar. All right, yep, yeah, put all that stuff together. Harry, what is this? Looks like it's an old, like, CB or... Lance's father was absolutely a collector. There's a lot of radios and gadgets and electronics. Do you think there's one of those cylinder record players here? Because there's a whole bunch of cylinder Amberol records. Some of these can be worth a lot of money write down the numbers on the top, because that's the determiner. All right. Lance has a whole box of those cylinder records. If we can dig up that record player, I know we can sell the set for quite a bit of money. Here's the cylinder player right here. Let me come take a look at it. This is a suitcase cylinder player, Edison Model D. It looks like this says 1900 through 1905, other patents pending, but it's marked May 23rd, 1905. I'll write it down so it kind of research I can come up with. Okay.
Bakari and her team determined that apart from the cylinder records, there wasn't much of value. So I'm thinking somewhere in the $3,000 to $3,500 for this sale. Kari is on her way to meet Diane, who wants to liquidate her sister's estate. It's over an hour and a half away from any major community, so attracting customers will be difficult, unless Diane has a ton of treasures hidden in the house. What is that actually? I thought maybe it was a Hoosier cabinet, but that's not. what I was thinking it was. It's not. Is it not? This is actually an old step back enameled cover. Does this actually come out? Oh, that's cool. Of course, the trunk here, it's really unique inside. Normally, a lot of these trunks aren't in this good a condition inside. There's a couple really great pieces. The enamel porcelain top table, the black and white set is adorable. I think somebody's gonna fall in love with that. The trunk is great. There are a lot of nice pieces here. Well, I just Bring hope people stuff. love this stuff as much as she did, you know? Oh, they will. There's plenty of <laughs> antique lovers just, out there. Uh. Despite Diane's great antique pieces, attracting customers to this location will be difficult. Instead, Kari will take the items to her store for consignment. She'll charge a commission so she can sell the items online and at the store. Kari, what do you think about these pictures here? Um, this is something that you would sell in your store? See. Um, I may be interested in a couple of them. Maybe okay. these old wildlife. You know, duck okay. and um, fishing ones would be interesting. I know those frames are really cool. Looking. They're very cool. I think somebody who put them yeah. in a cottage or their cabin, you know, something like that. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Diane's sister had been collecting antiques all of her life. She had a good eye for finding great pieces of furniture and keeping them in mint condition. Oh, wow. It's got some great detail here on the brackets. Love it. her master bedroom in here. Nice old chair. Yeah. And this little table is cute as well. This looks like it's probably mahogany. And this is a cool hat rack. That's a great hat rack. I think I'd actually be interested in buying that. It would look great in the store. That's about the furniture. All right. Now, other than the storage areas. Are you up for those? Yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> OK. I want to just show you this storage room that she has. Back okay. here. I'm gonna All let right. you take a peek because okay. it's kind of long and skinny. Okay. So, but let me check. It I out. have not gone through everything in there, so okay. I don't know what surprises we might find. Oh, there's actually a really cool old basket in here. That's fun. Yeah, there looks like there's a little bit that needs to be dug through there, but there's probably some uh, some treasures in here. Just never know, do you? Never, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Oh, this is neat. I think I have to have this. All persons with long hair must wear bathing caps. Just for fun. I don't know fun. where she finds all, stuff like that. All persons, not specifying <laughs> men or women. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. That's great. Uh-huh. Oh, look at the back, too. Somebody's oh. experiment. Yeah. And then uh, One storage, more storage area. storage, OK. Yeah. Again, right. I'm going to let you go. Oh, my. All right. Because there's not much room in there. Okie dokie, it's the scary <laughs> shed. The scary shed. Jugs? These milk know. jugs are pretty cool. What else do you have in here? Oh, wow. What is this? I haven't gotten into that to pull anything out, so I'm Idea not what sure this what's is. all underneath there. Looks like there might be some sort of cart. All right, we'll leave this to the guys. <laughs> yeah, that's my thought exactly. <laughs> Oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, yeah, that's neat. Yeah. So put by the door when you come in. And Absolutely. Hang your, Absolutely. Your coat on. Cute. Yeah. This is like a chicken wire sifter, but they're really cool oh. to hang jewelry on. Oh. Now you paint them and put, yeah. hang your jewelry. Thanks for showing everything to me, and we'll figure out all of our pricing and all that. Okay, Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks, Diane. After Kari picks out exactly what she wants to buy, and Diane decides what to sell on consignment, Kari will bring in her team to pick it up. In the meantime, Kari's got another consignment item arriving at the warehouse. It's from a customer who is moving and needs to liquidate some unusual items, like this oceanic measuring sphere. They put equipment in it, and this would help it float. This thing can actually go down four miles in the ocean. Wow. Yeah, so you can see like it's got all these little scuffs and scrapes, so you can only imagine what this thing's seen, you know? 
Do you think we should clean it up a little? I don't think so. I think we leave it just as is, as people kind of poke around and checking it all out. But what a great okay. conversation piece. Oh, you yeah. know, like in the right industrial type of setting. Oh, that'll in be somebody's perfect. House. I think it's probably houseproof. Oh. Well, let's not find out. <laughs> we shall carry it to the store. <laughs> Sounds good. Kari heads back to her office to prepare for Lance's estate sale. The team will research the vintage electronics, determine their fair market value, and find out what the cylinder records are really worth. There seems to be a huge variance in prices. I'm seeing here $12.99, $15.99, and then there's ones that are $125, $250. I don't know whether it depends on the length of the recording or what's actually the recording is of. Edison blue amber all cylinder with the number 5652. 52, 52 is, it looks like it's obviously a good one. The price of this one is $457.55. That's just online auction hoopla. What we should do is research them individually, write down all the numbers, and then if some of them are only worth, you know, like a few bucks here and there, we can put together a, a lot. lot. Okay. Exactly. Curry and her crew had hoped that some of the cylinders would be worth upwards of $200 a piece, but their research told them otherwise. Each cylinder is only worth about $10 each. But because there are so many of them, if Kari's team can sell most of the cylinders, Lance could still stand to make a healthy profit. Somebody will buy them, they're great. Back at Diane's house, Kari has returned to pick up her consignment items, and she's brought some muscle. Hi guys, how, how are you? What's up, Kari? All right, so we're gonna take quite a bit of furniture here today. This table in the corner here, these two chairs. Do we need to, no, no okay. we don't need to dismantle it. It's us. Here, Matt, catch. Come on, pumpkin, let's take this outside. <clears throat> this is nice and light. Oh. Careful with the inside of that trunk. Yeah, we got oh, it. We got it. I think it's pretty rare to find the trunk all intact, really good looking pieces inside. I think the trunk might be worth somewhere in the range of $200, $250. There's something in here I want to unearth. <laughs> Dusty. <laughs> oh, oh, watch it like this. I don't know what it is either. I can't tell. Uh, it looks almost like a church pew. Let's drag it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Hoss, all those boxes in that corner can go right on the truck. Do you want this fan? Yes. It's kind of heavy, dude. Look at this old sprinkler. Get out. I think I'm gonna take most of the items from the home to the store. I think there's quite a few pieces that are worthy of an online auction. Is that a beard trimmer? It's for, yeah, it's for shaving something. <laughs> oh, skip the barber. Oh, snap, what's that? Oh, oh, baby. Is it me? Diane has many classic pieces of furniture that are in high demand and will be perfect for the store. While searching around a crowded utility room, Kari uncovers an old cabinet that needs a new lease on life. She'll bring it back to the warehouse, where Stephanie will try to turn it into a treasure. Hey, yo, by the way, guys, those clippers work. No, don't, because it's going to pull my hair out. No. No, dude, that thing's gross. No. Get out of here. No, because it probably smells like fat women and Cheetos. It's the first day of Lance's estate sale. Kari and her team are scrambling to get everything priced and ready to sell. There's already a crowd out there because the eager ones get here first, hoping to jump on the best stuff. Is the heat on? Wait, let's just open some windows. Okay. There we go. All right, are we ready? Come on in. Okay. Welcome. This one. Twenty-five dollar. And if you get multiple stacks, I'll give you an even better deal. All right. You'll see it. Find your book. Anybody needs pricing, let me know. Not everything's priced, obviously. Yes. Ah, uh, the tin. Two bucks. Hello, how you doing? The Edison's we're gonna do for 10 bucks a piece. Lance's estate sale has attracted a large crowd. Customers are sifting through the extensive collection, and almost everyone seems to be finding treasures to take home. Even Haas has managed to find something that could be very valuable. It's a tetradrachm. It oh, says they were minted by the polis of Athens from around the middle of the 5th century BC onwards. That's old. Look at the price. $1,600? If it's real. Well, you need to find out if it's real. The albums are two bucks a piece. 
How much, Jay? On the phone, 15. Can't go 10. How about 12, since you're buying okay. so many things? All right. I think Kari is an excellent negotiator. She knows what she's looking at, she knows what it's worth, and she knows what you should be paying for it. She was tough. <laughs> They're the early strobe. You might disco dance again or something. Uh, you remember how old I am now. <laughs> <laughs> want 15 each? Yep. You want them? If I could get them both for that. Nope. Today's first day. So we found some really cool disco light speakers. I thought I had this guy sold on them. We were plugging them in, turning them on. He was unsure. Then he just disappeared. Next thing I know, another guy comes in, swipes them really quickly. He, that was exactly what he wanted. <laughs> Given the level of action, we're going to hit Lance's target at $3,500. Did you mark this sold? Yeah, it already is marked sold. Basically, 50 cents for the paperbacks. How much is the bank, huh? Uh, 10. Next. Just as the sale was picking up steam, Kari and her team had a major roadblock. City officials stopped by to inform them that the estate sale signs they had posted on public property were illegal. Okay, we'll go get them. So annoying. Bummer. This is gonna kill us. Kari is headed back to the warehouse, where she'll make some phone calls to sort out Lance's situation and check in on Stephanie, her refurbishing expert. I love the green. Thanks. It's gonna look awesome. And that's a real pale yellow that's coming through underneath. I think I paid like 40 bucks for it, so I think once it's done, it'll be worth uh, at least a couple hundred dollars. Super. I'll let you keep working. Stephanie is transforming this cabinet with two-tone paint, antique glaze, new hardware, and vintage wallpaper I was saving for just the right piece. The retail store is a natural extension of Kari's business. She can take items that didn't sell at the estate sale and sell them here to make more money for her customers. It's an interesting piece of glass, very thick. This is actually from 1950. It's a deep sea measuring sphere. Huh. It can actually go down to four miles deep. Wow. If you take this band off that keeps it together, the vacuum seal will actually come off and people are using it for punch bowls and atriums. And I just think it's a really cool object of art, good conversation piece. I'll let you take a closer look and let me know if you have any questions. Okay. The newly refurbished cabinet from Diane's has sparked some interest. This actually came out of the dungiest, dirtiest little utility room. Really? Of a home that I took some pieces on consignment and um, it really turned out awesome. Isn't this wallpaper funky and fun? Love the wallpaper. And this it's is functional. Cool. You can store all your That's stuff in here. That's what I'm thinking It's too. a great piece. It's, I love it. And I love the finish on this. Honestly, it's only been here about a week. I was ready to take it home for myself, so. Well, I think I'm taking it home instead. OK, so. great. Perfect. So let's ring it up. It's the second day of the estate sale. Kari wasn't able to get the city to make an exception for the signs, so all of them are going on to Lance's property. That means Kari has another job for Haas. Haas and Maya? Yes. We can't put our signs up because the code enforcement yeah, guy no, took them. So could you just maybe hang out down there and do the whole, like, you know how they to. dance around and they say, really? It might rain. Well, I'll get you an umbrella. <laughs> Are you gonna melt? While Haas is trying to bring in customers, Sharon is doing her best to sell as much as she can. And it's bright green, look, it's not even faded. Do you know how cool this would look in your house? I right, 120, you have loaded up. Deal, all right. The turnout has been two thumbs down for the sale so far. I had my usual customers come in this morning, which is great. They bought a bunch of stuff, but it's not the usual steady flow of traffic that we have. It's been a really disappointing day. I thought we were gonna have much more traffic flow than this. Okay, so $3. I think my least favorite part of the day was when people were just beating me up over $2. How about seven fifty? dollars <laughs> I was like, all right, fine, $2. I'm not gonna argue over $2. 
the rain is actually starting to kick up again. We did have some musical entertainment from Sharon, which is nice. Pretty good at this, Sharon. <laughs> I'm here all week. Oh my God. Dance, Liz. I'm trying. I need a dancing partner. Haas. Yeah, I love it. Curry has left Sharon and Liz to continue running Lance's sale and is headed back to the store to finish up some research on the coin that Haas found. So we did establish, based on the photos, that it's what they call a Greek tetradram. Okay. It was in wide circulation from 510 to 38 BC. I sent the photos to a numismatist who uh, immediately got back to me stating bad news on this one. Oh, so it's fake. Yeah, he said the piece is a cast counterfeit and it's evident when looking at the edge of the piece. Uh, the details are soft, definition poor, and he said based on that evidence alone, he doesn't even have to see the coin. Okay, thanks so much, Darren. I appreciate you looking into it for me. My pleasure, Kari. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bummer. Just checking it out. Without signs directing customers to the sale, low buyer turnout, and a disappointing discovery about a fake coin has Kari worried about meeting her sales target. She's got to find a solution if she hopes to make money for Lance. Down here is like World War. Junkyard. <laughs> well, let's wrap it up. I'm going to get in there and count the till and see how we did. And... All right. Not very much. Despite their best efforts, Kari's team was not able to reach their sales goal, bringing in almost $1,000 less than expected. I'm trying to break a few things down here. Still so much stuff left down here. I know. This sale had a bit of a roadblock, but I found a way around it. I put a few of the better pieces online, which will bring our total up to our expected goal of $3,500.